how do you build the right team? You know, that's the question. How do you build the team? And this goes back to the previous answer. The strategic plan, like, you, you have to, I mean, what are you building the team for? Mm-hmm. Same, same answer, same, like, what do you build? You know, because what happens a lot is we hire people for help, for, like, short-term help. We, we might think, say we have a bunch of stuff to process. We have a bunch of packages to sell out, to send out. And we hire somebody to help us send the packages out. But we hired them now. Now they part-time, they with us. We get through that rush. <laughs> and then we sitting there looking at them like, I figure out what I need you to do. What next? Yeah, what I, I got to figure that out. So you didn't hire according to a plan. You hired because of a short-term need, but you hired a longer-term solution. So if you got somebody like that came in, you was like, look, I'm going to give you a couple of bucks for a couple of days to help me get caught up. Boom. But often what happens is you hire somebody because you, you don't run into people that will work for, you know, a couple of days. Mm-hmm. So you, 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 once again, you did it without a plan. You just did it. We've all done it. That's it's, do it. Then you got somebody and they sit up there looking at you. Then they become, you know, then it's almost like they're your friends. So you're paying for your friend to hang out with you. And then you, and then if you're not really ready to delegate, all you doing is you basically, I mean, they're hanging out with you and you kind of still doing all the stuff and they there and they may like go, you know, take out the garbage or something. So you justify in your mind that you paying them for something because <laughs> you know, they, they around. And then, so you got like this friend person that you got, you paying for your friends you got why because you didn't have a plan for hiring somebody you just said yo i'm gonna get it and so that you you can't do that no i mean yeah you're gonna make the mistake but you you gotta correct that and one of the ways is is back to this you know strategy is admitting to yourself either what you should not be doing anymore or you just, it's not you. So it's not you. So if you're somebody that, based on your business type, you know, you're somebody that you don't, mm, you're not good at small talk, per se, right? You're not really good at small talk. Doesn't mean that you don't like people or anything. You're just not good. That's not comfortable. Uh, you probably shouldn't be running your customer support because there's a lot of small talk in <laughs> customer support. Probably not like that. Or sales, you know, like that. Um, if you do what you do and and like for instance, we'll stick with the uh, e-commerce or shipping thing, you know, you hand make a product all the time and then you have to stop and go ship out orders, so on and so forth. Well, the product can't be made without you. So, but it certainly can be shipped without you. Is a job that does not require you mm-hmm. until you teach somebody how to make the product as well. Get somebody to help you to go ship it. And heck, they might do it better than you and more efficiently. Mm-hmm. But you have to understand that and say, eh, I don't, I don't need to do this anymore. I, I don't, I don't, you know, of course you can do it. You can do everything. But where is your time best? positioned where's your time where 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 you know where is your your time and if you put a, an hourly rate now this is i mean because first of all you like in a way well, i'm not going to get all technical with um accounting and tax but you're the first employee so presumably your rate is higher than everybody else so if you were just looking from the outside in would you be paying the person with the highest rate to do a lower priority job? So let's just put it in numbers. Say we put, and I'm, I'll keep it somewhat modest. You worth 25 an hour. And, you know, because your work is, is the work, you know, like you do the revenue. People are paying for whatever you do. And 
that means you had to like clean up, <laughs> take out trash, mail, check the mail, open the mail, answer the phones, and all that. So you paying somebody twenty five dollars an hour to do all that stuff, and to be the main driver of the revenue. That's not that's that's not really where you want to go right there. So that's 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 it's not sustainable. Number one, it's just not. And so you want to find somebody, so you want to know, oh, I need somebody that man my phones. I mean, this is a, I need somebody to hide my phones. Now, nowadays, we got apps. You know, we yeah, have things absolutely. to do it. But in general, I need somebody to man my phone. That's a need. I need somebody that you can. So I guess what I'm saying is you can hire, my, you can modulate your hiring now. You can get specialists now. You can get somebody just for this. You can get some passed up time. You don't have to go out hiring a full-time person or a 20 hour a week person unless it goes there but to me and i'll let you handle the managing part because i I know you chomping at the bit for that one (laughs) but that's it but to me is understanding what you need and you're going to make mistakes everybody makes mistakes in hiring everybody it's not necessarily that the person isn't good or bad we often make mistakes by hiring at inappropriate times, hiring. We didn't really have the the position thought out when we hire somebody. Hiring is tricky. It's very tricky because of my old axiom. Everybody lies in um, on interviews. So I'll say it again. I say it all the time. Everybody lies. They're like everybody. Ain't nobody ever told the 100% truth on the interview. <laughs> so, I, I, it, you, somebody could prove me wrong but I know for a fact because why you going to embellish the parts that you you trying to get a job you lobbying for yourself where you going to sit there and be like yeah dog well, like, really you know I'm not really trying to work I mean I looked at the salary salary is cool and all that it's close to my house so you know um, yeah I mean like that you know my other job and I was getting to get ready to get fired, but you know, I figured I'd go make moves before then. You're not gonna tell them all that. <laughs> so, like I said, an interview was a first date. Everybody tells me lying, man. It's easy to tell you when you're hungry, you're gonna be like, Yes. And I'm, you know, and I give you the little scenario. But give me a situation where you so and so forth, and you're gonna have that one situation. That situation is not gonna happen in my company, so it really doesn't matter what the heck. You tell me if you you know anyway, I could go on and on about that. But what I'm saying is hiring is hard because people, you know, it's a it's like dating. Yeah, I'm waiting for them to come. Oh wow. Man, I might have just might we might be on, man. Yo, I just thought about it. Like the tender of hiring, yo. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Yo, that would be wild, man. The candidates come up, you like. Shh, shh, shh. I mean, you know, they they stuff would come up. You be like, man, nah, I ain't with this. <laughs> I'm just saying, yo, I'm just saying. Boom, boom, boom. You know, one time in my life, back years, 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 years ago, I was front facing in sales. Went to do an interview, right? So this kind of leads into what you were talking about. You know, people could put on the fresh, the fresh gear, right? Mm-hmm. You can look the part, yep. right? So I did an interview with this uh, this guy. Um, pretty intense industry. So you front facing with clients. That's how you build your your appointments online, and you go visit them. Mm-hmm. So anyway, at the end of the interview, I think he he kind of liked how I, I ended up getting a job. But you know, yeah. again, this is a little, very long time ago. So he we got to the end of the interview, and he was like. Look, I'm getting ready to run out to an appointment. I'll walk out with you. So we're walking out now. It turns from a to technical interview into a collaborative jelly beaning. Yeah. How comfortable you are. Like he's reading me the whole time. But I, I didn't know this until further down the road when he told me, right? Yeah. Walks me out to the he's like, where'd you park at? I'm like, I'm parked over there in the corner. So he's like, come on. Now, one of my things is Whenever I drive a car, I I just have to keep it clean mm-hmm. inside and outside, especially when I'm going someplace because it makes you feel good. Not only just putting on your clothes, but you just never know. Right. So yeah. not that my car is dirty, but 
it's got to be clean inside and that's got to smell good got to have things in the right place so i've generally been like that so anyway so he walks me over to my car so this is a simple car nothing spectacular it's clean he catches his eye it's clean i'm opening the door put my bag in there put my folders in there and he's parked like two spaces over from me Mm -hmm. So we ended up just having a conversation. He was like, nice to meet you. Sends me on my way, says, you know, they're still doing interviews. Someone to reach out to me within the next three weeks for the decision. Boom. I get home and my email is the offer letter. So get hired, go do the job. Build a nice rapport with with, with him over time, maybe eight, nine months down the road. And he, you know, he said to me, he said, you know why I hired you? He was like, not because you're good in sales and not because you, you came, you sharp, you're a sharp dresser naturally. Mm-hmm. He said, when you, from the time we walked out to the time we got to your vehicle, I, I knew who you were beyond what you were showing me. 